Dear Guru fans, The Guru wants to apologize for the tech issues we had taping this episode. One of the cameras shut down for no good reason. Sorry about that. Now here's The Compressor Guru. So here we are at the test bench. This is a highly specialized test bench that we bought at Sam's Club for $89. Uh, yeah, so it's just a table, it's not a true test bench. But I'm gonna walk you through testing these. This is a high pressure valve. And first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work the flapper up and down. And it moves up and down nicely. What I'm going to do next is, I'm, this is not compressor oil. This was a clean, empty bottle, and I have uh, red home heating fuel in it, or over-the-road diesel fuel. And it's a little thicker than gasoline, it's a little more expensive than gasoline, but I wanted to be able to show you using this because the color is so obvious. I have white paper towels underneath the valve, and if we have a leak, you're going to see it show up on the paper towel. And we just want to put enough in. Oh. <laughs> if you overflow from the side. Yeah, I see that. Okay. Now, we're going to leave that set there. You can see the fuel setting in the cavity. This is an exhaust valve. You have to check the exhaust valve upside down. You can see the fuel setting in the cavity and we're going to do a time elapsed thing. We're going to watch it for 30 seconds and if it doesn't drain down that's a good valve. While we're waiting for that, I'm going to go ahead and fill the next one too. I'm going to make sure the, the valve spring is operating. Realize that you're spilling the other one. Okay. My goal is... I'm pretty sure that 30 seconds is up. I keep it there. Uh-oh. Yep. <laughs> okay. That one's full. Ah, here we got a great example. Shall I shift? Yeah. This one's good. Here we got a great example of a valve that's leaking slightly. I'm going to fill it back up to the top. And we're going to watch it now. Oh. That valve is leaking. That valve will get a new spring and valve disc and it may end up getting a new valve because if there's damage, we'll tear this apart next, but if there's damage to that uh, I'm glad I'm back here, I'm not closer. You I'm wonder like... why I come home smelling like fuel valve? No, I don't wonder why, you just play in it. Okay. Okay, we filled it up again. I worked the spring up and down in case we washed a piece of dirt out. Nope, it's still going. Nope, it's still leaking. So, I don't think I can get it back in the, I can't get the genie back in the bottle. <laughs> so, so this one will definitely have uh, some work done to it. We will look at this one. And if there's a lot of wear on the valve disc, we'll replace it anyway. If there's not a lot of wear on the valve disc, we're going to put this one back together and let her go. So this one, here is where those pins went that disabled the valve when they're unloaded. And this is the one with the uh, high pressure side because it had more rust to it. Now that that's like that, i use my light. Uh-oh, that's not good.
this one needs work as well. So we're not even going to keep playing with that one. That one's leaking pretty good. We're going to go to our last one. We're going to operate the valve, valve disc. It works up and down. Works up and down. Works up and down. We're going to do the same thing with this one. And I need the light, then I'll show it on your side. Still running out the bottom. Oh, yeah. So three or four are going to get new valve discs and springs, and we may have to rechange the valves on these. But that's how to test your valves, folks. I was just on the phone with somebody, I think you were in Florida this week, and we were. I was walking you through how to test your valves. And this is a, this works whether it's a 240, 325, 350, 390, 5120. The, these valves are the same type. They may be different sizes, but these are the same type valve in all the Quincy QR models. And this is the way you can test them. And we go back to that first one we poured, and it's still full of fuel. So we're going to tear these apart next. And we do not have the parts here today. We have the parts ordered. The, we're going to film this episode in two parts. And we'll be back here in a few days. But before we leave, we're going to pop all four of these valves apart. And uh, I'll do some cleanup, and we'll be back in a few days to put them back together and put everything back together. But we're gonna pop these apart right now. So we're ready to tear down the intake belts. And if you notice here, there's four little lugs here at the bottom. And what I've done is set the vise to the right distance that it catches those lugs. Now there's only a quarter inch stud running from the bottom side to the top side. So these are never too tight to get apart. They they always go pretty good. I just took the wrench in there and I'll we'll give a push out. There, we're loose. And that's pretty dirty. So if you take a look at that, it looks, looks like this has had some salt contamination. But this is the high pressure side. You can see the three spots where the unloaders were working. Now when we look at the bumper side, there's no defined marks in these this ring and this ring. If you've got a chip or something out of that ring, we replace the valve. If you've got a good machinist, they might be able to fix it for you, but uh, we would end up replacing the valve. This will be going on the parts washer. Oh, look at that. In another episode, we talk about the evolution of uh, the QR series. This is the older style spring in the QR series. The new style is a coil spring. And I know you're gonna go, this is kind of a coil spring. You'll see the new style when we go back together. But this is the older style, uh, so somebody has obviously been in this and they had a spring, they used it, and it works fine. But what we'll How do does is, it work? Oh, it... Okay, now we can see better. Thank you. But we will put the new style in it with a new washer. We will then test it. If it tests good, we'll go back together. If it doesn't test good, we'll get a new valve and just put the valve in. But we're going to make this machine right. So I'm going to keep this together and it will go to the parts washer. Is that the one that did work? I mean that held a that no. held? Oh. No. Neither of the intake belts are holding very well. Oh. Yep. And same thing. Real easy. And by the way, you noticed I didn't do one intake, one exhaust, one intake, one exhaust. Because I got the vice set. Duh. Yeah. And we have, once again, some dirt. But that's a fairly new valve disc, but we're not seating. So we're going to have to look real good at the uh, disc on this. Can we see the disc again? I mean, that little one again? Because you were out of my range. I'm sorry. 
Oh. And this is just dirt. It's wiping off. Oh, okay. But we weren't seating. Now, some of the times we will test a valve and find out it was a piece of dirt under the uh, valve disc into the bumper. This is called the bumper. And when I have everything cleaned up, I'll put a new disc in it. And once again, if it seats and holds fuel, it's a good valve. Otherwise, we'll re be replacing it. This also has the old style spring in it. We'll set that off to the side, spin this together, and we'll get set up for the discharge valves. These are a grade eight bolt. And what we do, I used to have a tool made up that I welded together with a couple bolts on it. And I didn't have to mess around with sizing, and I just put it in, and we were good until I broke it on a real tight bolt one day. I never made a new one, so every time I have to tear... You could probably make a new one of those on the same episode you make a new one of those other things you broke. You know, that's a good idea. That's why I'm here. Now, the other side of that is, would you hand me the uh, impact? So... Please. Please. So you'll notice we put a couple bolts in, and don't use good bolts you want to use again, because when we hit this with the impact, these threads will be ruined. I usually have a couple bolts laying here, they must got thrown in the scrap iron. But I matched them up to the cavities. There we go. And... <laughs> Just a minute. To move so the thing doesn't hit us. Okay. There we go. Was that easy? And I do not know if this is the one that was good or if this was the one that was good. I think this. I think the next one was the one that was good. Now, as I look at this. This has a very high defined ridge. I'm confident in this valve. This valve disc, I'm not confident in. Once again, we've got a lot of rust and dirt. And we have another old style spring. So we will replace that. When we go back together, I'll show you the little trick to putting these together. Keep the same parts all together with that. That's having the parts washer. And I came, I fell down a little bit. Oh. Ready? go. You said ready to them like they were going to do something to help you. And another old style spring. And this disc, look how nice and clean it is. It's stained, but it's clean. This is the one that wasn't leaking. I'm certain of it. We got a nice defined bumper. As soon as I get it off the bolt. There we go. The bumper is clean and nicely defined. It does not need replaced. We have a good valve disc. Well, we're going to change the valve disc because we're going to change the spring. We're going to modernize this, these valves. And once we have them back together, we will retest them. So until we get parts, thank you. The Guru will be back in the next episode with new parts for these valves. He will reassemble and test them, and he's going to show you how to test them for yourself. God bless you, and have a great day.